it tells us about one of our important projects, I would say. And the prize fish project is about to uh, conclude, to, to finish. It started two years ago. Several Italian and Croatian regions were involved in implementing it and implementing this new approach also uh, with commercial purposes in the management of Adriatic fish, uh, fisheries and in particular concerning those uh, fish species, uh, small scale fishing as well as large scale fishing. The Adriatic, as mentioned many times, is a unique sea, a unique sea basin. The, we cannot make any distinctions uh, between uh, the various resources. Uh, uh, to whom do they belong? It's impossible to make a distinction because many species, uh, they reproduce uh, along the eastern uh, coast and then they grow along the western coast. Uh, uh, coast uh, and vice versa. So we need to tackle the Adriatic Basin as one single fishing area. And also the uh, World uh, Food Organization has done the same by recognizing a special GSA, GSA 17, involving the almost the entire Adriatic Sea uh, as one single uh, fishing area. Uh, whereas the southern part belongs uh, to uh, uh, GSA 18. Uh, what are these GSA? They are fishing areas recognized by the World Food Organization, uh, and uh, they are granted some unique features as common uh, fisheries, common fisheries in particular. Hence, it is very important uh, to uh, to get to deal with this issue in a cooperative way. That is to say, through a cooperative approach whereby both Italian and Croatian fishermen in particular, but uh, we, we could also include uh, other Slovenian ports and Albanian ports to uh, reason and to approach their resources in this way, in a cooperative way. In particular, our project, as already seen in the previous uh, webinars, dealt with, first of all, understanding the resources, the most important resources in the Adriatic Sea, and also uh, try to see how to best uh, exploit them in, an, in a sustainable way. What do we mean by sustainability? Uh, uh, not to destroy resources uh, as to their possibility of reproducing. So no overfishing in any case. So to be able to uh, catch uh, uh, fish uh, without actually uh, impacting on the survival of existing fish stocks. And in this way, uh, fish stock uh, can be maintained so that it can uh, continue to be uh, uh, a sufficient uh, fish stock uh, surviving also for the future. And this is our task. What? How can we do that? One of the ways, for sure, is to consider fish products not uh, as discards or uh, low value products. These uh, products uh, have a very important value also of from a traditional point of view. So they are uh, very precious, uh, precious assets uh, for the entire uh, world. And in particular, they are so valuable for our Adriatic fishermen. So um, we, we, the, 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 the direction is to fish less, but uh, uh, getting more profit out of it. And how can we do that? By working on some marketing aspects and by giving uh, fish products more added value so that fishermen can get more money out of their catches. Even by uh, uh, catching less fish. And uh, so the, in this way, they should uh, 
uh, never uh, uh, exceed actually uh, the survival uh, uh, limit for each fish stock. This is the reason why Regione Emilia Romagna and all the other partners, and uh, I would like to remind you here that the University of Bologna is the lead partner in the Price Fish project, and uh, the various this the 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 project uh, tried uh, to develop some important outputs, and it did so. One of them which is the one we are going to discuss today, is certification of environmental sustainability. There are different methods uh, to, uh, to be granted uh, sustainability um, certifications. We discussed them during our latest uh, webinar. Uh, there are a couple of uh, labels. I'm sure you know them very well. And concerning the study and the analysis that we carried out uh, on this uh, issue, these uh, brands, uh, these certificates are general uh, and generic certificates, whereas uh, since we are fully convinced uh, that uh, the uh, Adriatic Sea is a unique uh, situation, it needs some specific um, customized rules. Uh, biodiversity here is uh, unique. There are some uh, unique species due to a very unique um, conditions of the Adriatic Sea. It looks like a huge fjord uh, uh, with respect to the Mediterranean, uh, which is already sort of closed the sea if compared to the oceans. Uh, so this uh, very special uh, environmental conditions uh, and climatic conditions uh, uh, in the Adriatic uh, has led to the development of very unique fish species. And these fish species behave in very unique ways uh, from uh, other space species when living in open seas or in oceans or in the rest of the Mediterranean, I would say. So, and now I would give the floor to Giulia Sandali. She is a, a, a researcher with the National Research Center in Ancona. She has been working uh, on this issue of fishing, but in particular, she has worked in order to develop a, 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 a special sustainability um, certificate uh, for the Adriatic Sea, and she's going to tell us how they have been working with the other project partners. Uh, following, uh, following Giulia Sandalli, uh, uh, Ivan Matiasevich is going to tell us how the, our Croatian partners have worked within this uh, project and uh, uh, the he's going to tell us about the new products that uh, will uh, have already been marketed so in this way uh, through uh, th by increasing market outlets uh, fishermen can obviously get better profits from their work uh, Giulia Sandali are you there yes good morning good morning Pier Giorgio good morning everybody so I'm going to uh, to um, to take the floor actually uh, uh, the, 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 the focus today is how to manage the certifications, product quality certifications for marketing. So maybe you should not get into much scientific details, but get, give a more over uh, a wider overview. Uh, um, uh, shall I shall I share my screen? If I have to share my screen, I. Uh, Give me a couple of few seconds to share my screen.
trovata. Condivido lo schermo. Ok, I'm going to share my screen. Allora, Just a minute, please. Condivido lo schermo. Lo vedete? Can you see it? Per il momento ancora no, però... No, we can't see it yet. I shared my screen. I don't know why it doesn't work. Posso verificare un attimo con un attimo solo? Aspetta, condividi. Ah, forse dovevo selezionare. Ecco. Ecco. Sì, partita, lo vedete? partita. No, per... yes. Presentazione globale, così la vedete meglio. Ecco, ora dovrebbe essere perfetto. Ci should uh, be able to see now. Allora, dunque, come anticipato. Ok, as already mentioned by Pia Giorgio Vasi, uh, price, uh, price fish uh, purpose was to improve competitiveness of fish products in the Adriatic Sea. Uh, deriving from responsible fishing activities and uh, CNR IRBIM within uh, uh, this project has coordinated the work package three. As already mentioned by Pier Giorgio, the objective was to develop a scheme for Adriatic fish products coming from responsible fisheries, a sort of a regional scheme according to the model of other Adri Adriatic, uh, um, Adriatic uh, Sea uh, focus, uh, focused and designed, specially designed to meet the needs of our fisheries. Uh, we have uh, prepared a draft of this uh, uh, of this scheme, we have which we have called ARFM, Adriatic Responsible Fisheries Management. Uh, um, so we can see here the method that we have followed. First of all, we have mapped and selected the fishing activities within the Adriatic Sea that we thought uh, could apply for uh, a, a scheme like ARFM. And we have selected them based on the value of catches, but also uh, by looking at the fishing gears already used, uh, whether they were already selected ones or not. We then uh, compared the first results of this initial mapping activity with, uh, um, we, we we matched it with some visits with the various fishermen, both in Italy and in Croatia. We had several meetings, consultations with them to see whether they had already selected potentially interesting fishing activities. But we also wanted to know their opinion on how should ARFM actually develop our scheme and whether this type of certification trade um, brand would actually be useful for the Adriatic Sea and who would be the uh, prospective users of this uh, uh, brand. Uh, after a comparison with other already existing certification standards, we have prepared a first draft of these uh, uh, regulations to be applied to the ARFM certificate. We got contributions from all the from all price fish partners in this. Quite rapidly, I'll show you uh, the various types of fish activities uh, that uh, we have used. Uh, as far as Italy was concerned, uh, we use clams. Uh, uh, and um, and jackknife claps are used with dredges, hydraulic dredges, uh, uh, cuttlefish uh, uh, fished with traps, uh, and then uh, uh, squills uh, uh, fished with small uh, traps and small sea sna uh, snails with small uh, uh, traps, and uh, also mussels. 
uh, we did the same uh, the same um, with uh, Croatian uh, fishing activities uh, concerning uh, anchovies, soles, uh, other mussels, etc. Et you can see here quite uh, briefly the uh, how the um, the standard is going to work. First of all, there are three main principles of making up its pillars, governance, environment, and socioeconomic uh, purposes. Each of these uh, uh, pillars is uh, uh, then supported by certain articles, so-called supporting articles. They are the legal framework for these uh, uh, standards. Uh, they refer to codes of conduct by the uh, World uh, Food Organization, etc. And uh, each of these general clauses is then uh, subdivided into seven specific indicators. And these, these indicators are the reference parameters used within ARFM to carry out fishing uh, activity um, assessment. There is a sort of double level of assessment within ARFM. Uh, so any uh, activities uh, within a fishery uh, could be done uh, along two different levels. Uh, firstly, we look at how fishing is carried out by all fishing boats working in the reference area. So we look at the fishing fleet as a whole in the Adriatic Sea. And uh, this assessment level, it, we, it was called as com evaluation component, whereas uh, a component of evaluation, whereas in the second level, we look at individual fishermen, uh, like uh, cooperative or a single uh, fish, fisherman enterprise applying to get the uh, ARFM. So we look at the individual applicant and we call this uh, a component of accreditation. Summing up and looking at the content uh, to individual uh, specific uh, contents, we can see that the first pillar uh, regarding governance indicators so refer to the legal uh, international, uh, both European and national framework concerned. Uh, for example, whether there already are some measures to reduce uh, um, or to limit overfishing or some regulations, uh, uh, European regulations regarding uh, the sea environment or some codes of conduct or guidelines by the WFO. Uh, uh, that is all, uh, whether there are already, already some management, fishing, fishery management uh, tools already in place and how all this is actually applied um, uh, applied by fishermen. We also look at uh, the existence of any cooperation systems uh, on whether there are uh, specific environmental policies in force. And uh, also we, uh, we look at the existence of multi-annual management uh, plans. Then there is a second uh, pillar concerning the environment. Uh, and in this, we look at scientific research, uh, data collection, uh, uh, if uh, precautions are taken, uh, ecosystemic approach. And we have also uh, developed a so-called food uh, web model uh, developed with OGS finally in the last pillar which I would say is, uh, is the real new uh, element uh, provided by ARFM because in all the other existing cert international certifications, uh, for example, in MSC and Friends of the Sea certifications, uh, 
uh, there is no pillar uh, uh, focusing on socioeconomic aspects, which, in our opinion, are key, are fundamental, because when we talk about the sustainable development, uh, we should not just uh, consider uh, the environmental uh, issues uh, of, of sustainability, but we should also see that uh, uh, the whole industry is capable of uh, bringing about favorable economic conditions and at the same time capable of drawing new workers, young people, but at the same time to ensure basic social standards uh, in terms of health and safety on board, but also to ensure uh, adequate uh, job uh, employment conditions, uh, women's rights, uh, women uh, often work in these uh, fishing companies uh, they normally work uh, doing all the administration work but uh, their job is not always uh, properly paid uh, so we have also included this uh, pillar within our arfm certificate procedura eh, di, eh, di certificazione che se quindi abbiamo proprio immaginato il processo di certificazione come dovrà avvenire e in particolare esso si svolgerà in sei fasi che vanno dalla candidatura quindi dalla presentazione di tutta una documentazione allegata alla domanda da parte del richiedente a... italiano in inglese eh, si, si scusi uh, Sorry. So we will, and then we will have a pre-evaluation in order to give a first estimation of the conformity, compliance of the fishery with the standards. And then there is a real assessment and evaluation of the fishing uh, fishery activities. And if the fishery activities are in compliance with the standard, they will be certified. Uh, and the ASM certificate is um, for 80 years, but there will be some periodic audits in order to assess that uh, standards are complied with by the fishery activities. And when an action plan is envisaged in order to obtain the certificate, because fishery activities might be evaluated well, but they are not perfect. And so in this case, we will require the applicant to present an action plan that can be assessed during the monitoring activities through these audits every two years. After eight years, the applicant can apply for a new certification. This is the idea that we have structured with the overall objective to make producers more responsible with less impact on the resources in, ser in terms of more responsible catching and more responsible consumers, consumers who are more aware. So this idea of the producer should be transferred to product labeling. And so, and so this uh, responsibility should be more recognizable on the market. And so the product, the producer could realize added value. And uh, thirdly, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, um, focus on the producer only, but on workers too, on fishing boats, on the sector should offer working conditions in compliance with the protection standards at the social level. So the idea is to contribute through these aspects to blue growth from the sea resource up to sustainability on this resource with all 
dimensions, uh, sustainability, not only environmental sustainability, but also economic and social sustainability. This is the end of my presentation. You can find our contacts, my contact, and there is also Giuseppe Scarcella, who is the scientific manager of the team. We are available to answer your questions or to give you clarifications on the, on the theme and on the products. Thank you very much. I think that your presentation was very important because we, we have been introduced. Uh, you, you don't see my camera, I don't know why. Now it's all dark. I don't know why, sorry. Sorry about that. There, there must be a problem. Anyway, you, you can see my picture. I would like to thank you because I think that the real challenge after theoretically constructing this system to ensure product sustainability from sea to the fork, I think that this is its it is necessary also to um, see how to apply it. And this is the next step. And price fish will apply to this uh, reflection because as like all uh, European projects, uh, we hope that, that there will be an a continuation of this project in order to construct a future for our Adriatic fishermen and for our products, because the fishermen are already implementing this situation, and we hope that this situation will not be um, compromised by external situation, for example, those who present Adriatic products who that are not Adriatic. And from those who do not comply with these sustainability standards, I thank you, CNR. They worked on this issue. And I remember the principles on which sustainability is based from a European point of view. These principles concern not only environmental sustainability, because we try, we tend to, cons to always consider this when we talk about real sustainability, any European program stresses that the sustainability is environmental, social, and economic sustainability. If we do not achieve these three objectives, we cannot achieve the real objective of sustainability, but only a sustainability that creates problems for some. If there is no social sustainability, it is difficult to create and keep the traditional area of these activities. The social aspect of family, of, fri of friends, of the tradition is very important for the fishery activities because the, this involves to respect our sea but within the framework of economic sustainability. If we achieve the objective of social and environmental sustainability, but we don't have economic sustainability, so the, the first two types of sustainability will have a serious problem, and the third type will not be ensured if there is no fish. There are no fishermen. If there are no fishermen, there is no economic value of these things. Thank you. Thank you, Giulio. I give the floor to Ivan Matiasevich, 
who accompanied in all these webinars. He, he works for a cooperative in Zara, and so he contributed to elaborate products that are processed that can and so they can present sustainable products to us all and they can give a better added value to fishermen who can who can succeed in catching less in order to better respect the sea even you have the floor Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vasi. And uh, thank you, Julia Sandali. I am Ivan Miatezevich. I am the main coordinator about the new technology with our cooperative. I work for Omega 3, but I'm also concerned on the coordination of the work package for of the project of Bryce Beach, Mrs. Bonazza Staric, too, of the cooperative Istra, will help me clarify for us a part of our products. But uh, I will talk about uh, uh, Omega 3, and then Mrs. Bonazzi Droich will talk about uh, the uh, organization of uh, producers. Uh, and then we will draw some conclusions. And now I, I will share my presentation with you. I hope that you can see my presentation. Thank you. Mrs. Sandali already told you about many things about uh, ARFM. So a good part concern the innovative technologies and the fishing equipment. We mentioned the various times during our webinars. So rapidly, I will focus on the application of these technologies on the production, on the standards, on the products uh, realized and manufactured within the price fish project our cooperative omega 3 was pilot in the application of a technology of c pumps the main function was to improve the quality of the raw material of the raw material processed and so our sardines and anchovies, the species we work with, with the, the cooperative Omega-3, are sucked together with the seawater into a main unit on the boat, a central unit on the boat, together with the sardines and anchovies, with this water, so these anchovies and sardines are transferred into a thermal reservoir with ice and cold water. So the product is damaged less because the flesh of sardines and anchovies is very soft and it can be easily damaged. In this manner, when we obtain a less damaged product,
And so we offer the, the possibility of uh, selecting fish that we can also um, throw in the sea. So with the cooperative ISTRA, we have seen another pilot project. We are talking about a shrimp fishery. They focused on the application of a special machine to remove the shell from shrimps. Uh, called the deep water sh sh shrimp. So this is the name of uh, the species of the shrimp. So we have increased the exploitability of this resource with this machine. They exploited the flesh and all, all that is in the pink shrimp up to 80% of uh, exploitability of our pro product. Bivalvia is an organization of producers. Even we, we can see a fixed image. Uh, do you have uh, some slides? Ah, okay, it's okay now. Sorry, I was uh, not uh, listening to the translation. Uh, you you asked something about the slides, but this was my introduction. Now I will show you the other slides. I just uh, wanted to tell you what is our position concerning the environment. We analyzed the economic and safety standards of fishermen of our fleet. But now I know that we don't have a lot of time, and so I will continue with the presentation. I will tell you more about innovative products. So we have uh, something here that concerns our three producer organization. When some pilot surveys were carried out, a better quality of the seafood was uh, achieved. So we have less damage the fish for Cooperative Istra with more resources that, that can be exploited. And for Bivalvia, an extended shelf life of the product. When we talk about the shelf life of products, it is important for consumers to have a product that can be used, that can, that can have a, a longer shelf life. And so we, um, we are concerned on environmental protection and on the impact on the consumers. They have new products and they can consume in products in a different manner, different recipes that can be prepared very quickly. The Omega-3 cooperative had this project, this pilot project on sardine fillets with our with the laboratory of Padova. This pilot project lasted three months. We had very good results. We are very satisfied about what we achieved with our cooperative Omega-3 that only has frozen sardines and anchovies and we work on the processing and so you see this new product that you see in this 
photo. So we have this the new product of a butterfly cut fillet. So the weight is uh, between 150 and 200 grams. It is an innovative uh, package. We used argon gas CO2. Before, before putting the product in the machine for packaging at a certain pressure, the product goes through a pipe full of water, of pressurized pipe that uh, uh, kills uh, or uh, bacteria. It is ionized water. And so we have a product that lasts more. So the project gave other results. A sardine could stay on the shelves for nine days. So this result was very important. So uh, the product can reach uh, uh, further markets and local consumers also can have this product available for a longer period. It is very convenient. We are along the coast and so but our life is uh, stress, stressing and very rapid in general. So many consumers use the supermarkets to buy food. To, and so the fact of finding a clean product with this uh, shape of a butterfly fillet that can be prepared very easily. So this is very important for families in just to prepare. Now I gave the floor to Mrs. Sasasaric, who is going to tell us something about their pilot project, burgers, fish burgers. And then later, I'm going to add a few other slides. has already even has uh, told us. I am the other project manager for the Istra Cooperative. We were set up in 2004. Our objective, our main objective was to buy fish and resell it. So resale, resale of fish. Uh, and we decided to give more added value to our fish products We're using our equipment. And that's why we took, took uh, part in the price fish project by using our equipment. We have a specific, uh, specific equipment to process fish, to shell uh, the fish or the bone, or to debone fish for other types of fish. In this case, we are talking about uh, shelling uh, shrimps because our product is based on both mullet and shrimp meat. Why uh, have we chosen these uh, species? Because uh, we have uh, uh, some seasonal peaks uh, in certain periods and during certain periods, uh, prices are low. We are talking about the spring and summer when the price of these uh, fish uh, 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 fish uh, goes down because uh, they are present in great uh, quantities. Uh, sorry, Andreas, to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt you. There is a problem. I don't know what. So our objective was to uh, better uh, 
use uh, seasonal uh, catches and to maximize uh, the use of our species by uh, processing them with this uh, uh, equipment. Equi this equipment, piece of equipment was uh, built in Germany and to better use uh, the, uh, our shrimps. In the past, we used to shell our shrimps in a different way. We used to debone it and only 45% of the meat could be used. Whereas with this equipment, we have significantly increased the use of the fish by 30%. Hence, uh, lower pressure on our fisheries, on our fish stocks. And this is what we get. And we also save uh, money. Uh, uh, we can uh, have improved uh, um, our production up to 300 kilos of fish per hour. And in this way, we can also lower the price of this product, which would otherwise be uh, quite expensive. So we have this uh, shrimp and uh, mullet uh, burger. And we have also uh, analyzed, we also did some research in Croatia and also by Medicare in Padua, as far as Italy is concerned, uh, they also did some research. Uh, this is quite an innovative uh, product uh, that was uh, investigated. First of all, they analyzed the, uh, the composition of this burger and in the second phase, uh, we um, we tried to see how much we can prolong shelf life of this product, which is processed with uh, uh, unique technologies. I'm going to tell something about the technology. We are talking about skin packaging. It's a packaging technique in these uh, trays. We sent our frozen uh, frozen uh, burgers to Padua. They have uh, thawed them, and the product was mixed according to a specific recipe. So with the ground uh, mullet meat, the shrimp, uh, uh, so the, the, the ground um, mullet and shrimp meat uh, were mixed together. And uh, aromas, flavors were added to it. And in this way, we get this burger, fish burger, which is then modeled, shaped uh, under special presses. And uh, the weight is about 150 grams. So we are then talking about cryogenic crusting. This is a, a special um, technique whereby uh, the burger is uh, frozen to minus 90 degrees, but only at the surface. And this is very important to keep this 3D shape of our burgers. And when we package it uh, uh, with a vacuum technique, uh, it doesn't change. It, the, 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 uh, the shape is doesn't, it's not deformed, it, it's not changed. So then we apply HPP treatment. You see these trays, uh, uh, they are vacuum uh, trays. And then uh, there is another treatment, this HPP treatment to prolong the shelf life of our product from 15 to 30 days. We wanted to stabilize the product under high pressure up to 6,000 bars. This is what we do. So it's a high pressure uh, packaging in this way. We uh, get rid of uh, unwanted microorganisms, bacteria, etc. So uh, the fish burgers are packed in this flexible tray. They are put in this high pressure chamber which is then filled with water to uh, get the same pressure that is obtained in uh, the, on the product. Uh, in this way, we can prolong product shelf life up to 30 uh, days. This is a technology that has already been employed for some time in the uh, United States, in Japan, in Austria, etc. So these fish burgers, they may last up to 30 days in your fridges. And the purpose of our cooperative is to market these innovative products 
to increase the value of these products. In this way, we get higher sustainability, a higher competitiveness of the entire fishing sector, and we uh, can get access to new markets as well. In this way, we were able to fully exploit our resources. So this has a positive impact on the environment, on sustainability. We have improved the um, effectiveness of our equipment and we have also increased our profits. In this way, the fishing industry uh, has greater opportunities to invest in it, to further increase profits based on innovative products. And at the same time, we are by exerting less pressure on our fishing resources, on our fish stocks. In this way, we have also uh, established new connections with other fishermen. Uh, actually, uh, we'll, uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, and we, uh, maybe we can look at the video, but I, want, I have a question for Andrea because when we talk about uh, uh, having uh, uh, shrimp burgers, maybe someone would uh, be quite surprised because uh, uh, when we think about shrimps, uh, uh, we know that they cost 60, 70 euros per kilo, even more, they're even more expensive. So I would like to remind you here that these shrimps uh, uh, have difficulties uh, being sold uh, because uh, they are quite delicate shrimps. So uh, these shrimps uh, would not have any other outlet on the market. So that's a question. Uh, and then I have another question. And then you can show us your video. Have you already started production? Uh, is this product uh, intended for large distribution or for resellers, a local resale? And do you think you're going to export this product also to Italy or other markets? Uh, and have you already started production? Uh, before the break, uh, I would like to tell you what are our bivalves products that we are using. These are clams with both with tomato sauce, 400 grams of product with both or uh, with or without tomato sauce. This pilot project has to be repeated, of course. The, 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 in, the, uh, in the procedure and especially in the trays uh, without uh, tomato sauce, uh, the uh, clam shells uh, uh, were, had broken. So this was not really good uh, for the final look at the product. Uh, so I think that uh, the the the, uh, the treatment is always HPP treatment, but I think we the uh, the product was more damaged uh, without the tomato sauce. I wanted to say that the the unique uh, aspect of Price Fish project uh, is uh, that uh, many people collaborated collaborated and in particular two producer organ um, organizations, one in Istria one in the in Dalmatia and one in the Veneto region. They work together, these uh, cooperatives. So in this way, we have uh, we can have a very wide view of the situation. So it's a real uh, Adriatic Sea-wide experiment, which may be useful to everybody. Andrea, what were you saying? Are you already selling these hamburger, hamburgers? Are they already available on the market? No, they are not uh, uh, being uh, uh, not on the market yet. We are still working to prepare them. 
Uh, obviously, our plan is to produce and sell them, but we still need to solve some uh, uh, issues in, within our cooperative first, and then we are going to start producing these fish burgers. And with our intention, hopefully, uh, uh, will be to sell them on the market, as, uh, in, in several markets too. As was said before, uh, consumers have shown from our pilot uh, studies uh, hamburgers are not their favorite product, uh, but uh, it can uh, be matched uh, also with uh, other uh, types of fish burgers using different fish species. We'll see. Uh, we are highly motivated to work on it, and we do hope that in the end will be successful. Thank you. Again, it will be a, a, a certified product, certified uh, uh, from the point of view of sustainability. And the different shape from what we're used to seeing might uh, or uh, means that we can better uh, use resources, but at the same time is going to apply a sustainable approach to uh, resource uh, exploitation. So you can show us the uh, video and we can start having a 10 minute uh, break. And after that, uh, there will be very other, very interesting topics that we are going to discuss. We'll be talking to Marcello Leoni, a chef. Uh, uh, the, and we are going also to talk about the importance of training. Uh, and we are going to talk it with Alberto Alberani. From the uh, uh, Remo Brisi Institute, near Comacchio. And then with uh, Valdis Paesanti, uh, president of Eco Pesca Emilia Romagna. We are all going to hear his opinion. And uh, Valentina Tepidino, who manages uh, the Department of Food Technology at the University of Bologna. She's going to talk us about the importance of science to grant um, food uh, uh, food safety. And then we have the president of Eurofish Market, and a magazine, an important uh, magazine, which is very important in its uh, scientific um, uh, popularization work. Uh, but, uh, um, she is also the author of an important uh, uh, fish atlas. So she can also help us better recognize fish when we go to the fishmonger, when we buy fish and to see whether this is a fresh fish and if this is a sustainable fish or not. Also, thanks to the introduction of our sustainability uh, mark or brand. Uh, so Andrea, if you want to start the video, how long is the video? It's short. It's a short video. I'm not really know exactly. Then I launch a second video. And so you can start showing us your video. Thank you. Shrimps are a very important species. Uh, 
the uh, marketing of these species is linked to the preparation of the tails, the use of shrimps uh, may be improved by using innovative equipment that already exists. We have these deboning machines uh, to better use the uh, shrimp uh, pulp. The shrimps are ground first, and then uh, the, the result is used for the food industry to, to be turned in different uh, products. Uh, with this method, uh, we can use up to 80% of uh, full shrimps, uh, which are quite nourishing and valuable. And at the same time, we can improve actually uh, the, uh, both the artisanal and industrial base for uh, marketing these products. Shrimp burgers are uh, quite uh, common in, and available in significant numbers, uh, but using uh, innovative technologies for deboning helps us uh, increase uh, the use of these products. And we can also improve also the marketability of uh, shrimp of shrimps. This product can be then mixed with other uh, fish, uh, either fresh or frozen. And the product uh, must be properly processed, quickly frozen. Uh, it is also uh, important uh, to uh, use other types of technology uh, in order to increase the usability of fish and of this specific uh, shrimps. Uh, thanks to the price fix project, uh, we have uh, um, assessed uh, the, uh, the possible use of innovative uh, machines and equipment in order also to increase uh, shelf life of these products. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I'm going to launch another video. And then after the video. Va bene, perfetto, d'accordo. Va bene, grazie mille. We will see you at quarter past 11. Thank you, and we are going to, to have a break too here. Thank you. Siamo. Devo trovare dove il video è qua, ecco qua. Uh, L'audio non è attivo. Si sente? Eh, dovrebbe cliccare su, su iconcina del volume. Esatto, e sposta quella pallina, perfetto. Forse 
Adesso devo attivare anche il suo di audio, sa? Non sentiamo l'audio. Non so come mai. Allora. Non so perché. Non si sente l'audio? No, probabilmente dipende dal computer. Temo che dipenda dalla sua connessione, che forse non è delle più forti, perché lo vediamo anche un po' a scatti. Eventualmente possiamo anche riprovare dopo la pausa, se non, perché lo vediamo effettivamente a scatti. Facciamo una pausa forzata di 5 minuti. Dottor Vasi, possiamo ripartire. Ah, l'audio muto. Ecco qua, scusate. Allora, vedo che siete ancora qui attenti, abbiamo visto un po' di you video. still here, so we saw... A few videos on the prize fish project, some videos about the life of fishermen of Omega 3, of Croatian fishermen, with the nice images of a fishing situation that is similar to that of our coast. On sardine fishing in the western part of the Adriatic, the situation is not uh, so well as in the past and this is one of the problem to be dealt with sardine fishing italian side was a fishing activity that was not uh, uh, interesting because fishermen had the prices that were too low and so the traditional um, the traditional fishery activity with two boats trawling the nets and one uh, collecting it uh, and putting it putting it on board so this system was not uh, economically uh, profitable and uh, and so many fishermen converted to a, a trawling activity with more uh, targets the previous uh, uh, type of uh, fishery activity aimed at uh, catching sardines and anchovies and the other species uh, of bluefish in uh, Croatia in the eastern uh, part of the Adriatic uh, there is the per se in a net uh, system that is used uh, so with the big net that surrounds all the, the bank of the sardines and uh, catches them. And what is the advantage of this type of fishery? The Croatian colleagues know very well. Fish is healthier, is less damaged. For example, for food processing, for processing in fillets, it is a fish that can be easily used. So there were these transformations, but I don't know whether Marcello Leoni is here because I would like to listen to him 
I'm here, good morning. Marcello is an important uh, chef. He's a great expert of uh, seafood uh, products. So he managed the many, he ran many restaurants, among which a fish restaurant. So I would like um, to ask uh, his opinion. What is uh, the situation of the use on the use of fish in restaurants today? Marcello is a consultant for professional schools. And so he's uh, involved in the dissemination. So what is the use? What is today's use of fish by restaurants? And how can you see the possibility of a label of a brand ensuring fish sustainability? How can you make of this uh, uh, of this uh, label the branded product and added value so the fact of uh, creating a brand a label that gives uh, added value because new technologies are applied for fish extraction or for fish catching the speed uh, how you can preserve uh, this product that uh, this is an added value for all on the average restaurants have a better professionality in the user so they have more advantages i think that all everything must start from the base sometimes we have to make efforts to uh, let's say consider to consider the product. We should not think of what we have to do in restaurants. We simply, we should simply have a, a quicker dialogue with the market, with a product that uh, can be preserved in a better manner. So these uh, things are apparently very si simple, but the reality is different. Um, so the product uh, speaks uh, by itself. So our sea, our Mediterranean, has a better quality product. Uh, this depends on the seawater, on the temperature, in order to respect uh, more the place where we live, we can use a better product when the product is out of the sea. What can a great cuisine do for these products? We saw the, how fast the food contacted chef in order to be attractive. Do you think that the great cuisine, the big cuisine, might do something for producers who wanted to develop these innovative products. Is, is it possible to have a collaboration? I think that this step is obligatory because we have to be aware in terms of those who know very well what happens in cuisine. It is a fundamental to have a product with a clear quality of the product and the end of its processing. I think that the big industry will con will uh, collaborate with the big chefs in order to obtain a better better results. For example, there are some collaborations with chefs in our region. And now there are products on the market. And so if we work on the younger 
a, on the younger age groups. I am also 50. And so I consider the cuisine a certain manner, but when you taste good products, it's difficult to go back. This is the basic thing. But uh, this applies uh, to us and to children, children who taste uh, our anchovies or clams are not afraid of uh, these products anymore. Sometimes uh, there are prejudices, but we do not consider that uh, the technology we had available in, in cooking products is not the same. You now, in, in, when cooking products, uh, we can cook and make uh, excellent products without a uh, huge quantity of waste. Yes, on this, uh, the technology helped us a lot. There is, uh, uh, I, we have to consider the attractiveness uh, to people especially for fish. We evaluate the applied technology as something superior, but on uh, sea products, uh, it, it, this is considered something that is uh, forced because we, they do not have, uh, they do not know the processes and the technologies. In the midst of information we have, Sometimes it is difficult for people to understand, to understand that, that there is not a fish for everyone. So it is important to understand that, that fish can be paid more, but it is worth the effort because in this manner, we contribute to keep organoleptic characteristics of this product and we ensure sustainability. I think that, uh, that we are obliged to follow these uh, international trends concerning food. Let's say that uh, sustainability is an added value that is exactly what makes a difference. So Michelin gives a green star now in a, on top of the three stars, a red, sorry, a green star on the sustainability, on how you work, on, on how you develop uh, the quality of product. We don't uh, have all these choices available. We must be aware. I think that the development of the technique of the science that is looking at the at our path at our Z products is fundamental. So probably we we had to do this before. But the important thing is to um, carry out this. I think that an, an association of Adriatic chefs should be uh, created, if not formally, in terms of witnesses, because the cuisine is a series of witnesses uh, to both the sides of the Adriatic, perhaps in Italy, we did this more in Croatia, less. But I think that it is really necessary to learn to meet and also in the rival aspects. But I think that a shared narration of the history of the Adriatic fish can be shared. I think that on this point, chefs are getting better. I often say that uh, in reality, our diversities are, are our strengths. We can see the intuition of a company that must become an added value for everyone. 
And this would be the next step. I mean, the strength of someone must be everyone's strength. We must recognize the merits of the, those who develop a certain project. And so we should copy from those who are doing well. So this is a common heritage. Thank you, Marcello. I interrupt you because I would like to give the floor to Bertol Berani. We talked about training. Are you still with us? Yes. Alberto, Alberto, we can see a, 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 a photo. Uh, it's my puppy. It's my puppy. It weighs, he weighs uh, 70 kilos. Alberto works uh, in a school that worked a lot on this. The school wants to be partner of an international project and plays a fundamental role. Instituto Remo Brindisi is concerned with the training of young of the youth concerning a new attitude of fishing and especially of uh, uh, shellfish fishery. Remo Brindisi has a section that also concerns uh, the cuisine aspect. I would like to ask Alberto, what do you think of the experience of Remo Brindisi and the added value for the youth on this issue of sustainability? Say some sustainability on the on our tables. We would reduce the various steps from fishermen organized in agreement with the processing enterprise. We would like to reach the tables of our consumers or of our restaurants. Okay. Allora, uh, intanto ringrazio molto anche le parole dello show. I would like to thank uh, very much uh, uh, Marcello's words, and I'm sorry that my students are not here with us. This is a work that was uh, carried out by our, our boys, our students. Uh, uh, students gave me an idea. Since we have three different uh, curriculums in our institute, we work with uh, math teachers, English teachers, our chefs. And what, uh, what did we do? Um, we talked about ancient, uh, old uh, fishing techniques. And our students, uh, they went on board the fishing uh, boats uh, and uh, followed them. And uh, when they came back after two years of uh, uh, investigations, actually they realized that many are really devastating for the, uh, for stockfish. And they selected uh, the following fishing years. First of all, traps. Traps, they uh, catch fish in a more selective way. They create no problems uh, to the fish stocks. Uh, and for example, whereas with uh, tro trolling fishing is no selective, there, there are lots of discards, there is a lot of waste, and also the final product is not the best one. So uh, they asked uh, us to work scientifically on these uh, uh, products. Uh, these uh, traps have been used for many, many years. And we carried out several experiments, used some modified traps to catch specific fish types. The idea is the fact that since we are a special school and schools should not just do uh, training and education, but also research and communication. So we have focused on these other two activities. We carried out more scientific research with the final product that I'm going to show you and also communication. Uh, along two lines, uh, 
uh, we went uh, to the fishermen telling them what we did uh, with pictures, with brochures, and we invited them to eat. And that's the most important thing because uh, uh, eating is so important, is uh, so uh, impactful. And what did we do? You see these uh, traps have been modified by the students themselves. So they realize uh, which is the, the best uh, uh, type of uh, trap. This is a commercial one. It doesn't uh, catch a lot. Um, uh, and we did several tests in, in, at sea. We tried also several bites. And then uh, we uh, used different buoys uh, to uh, draw different uh, uh, types of catches. The students really enjoyed that. Uh, we, we, took, we had these types of, uh, uh, we, um, uh, we, we, we caught uh, um, different types of, uh, uh, of fish types. Uh, and we invited uh, uh, crabs, for example, where you see the crabs, and we invited the, our fishermen uh, to eat for, for lunch. These, uh, these are from 14 to 18 years old students. And uh, uh, so what were we able to do within price fish? We were able to export a product uh, which we do hope is going to be developed in uh, the future and also to further develop communication. This is so important. We need to teach chefs to use high quality uh, fish and fish obtained through sustainable fishing. And we know that uh, uh, in our region, we have very high quality products already. So, uh, and uh, we have also um, a, a, um, a, a curriculum uh, uh, for to, uh, tourist uh, tourist sciences, and uh, they have this this branch of our school has developed a special app uh, whereby uh, uh, consumers can in, uh, find fresh fish locally. So this was something that we developed uh, within the price fish proje project. Uh, actually, students were able to further work on what they already knew on, on the skills that had already uh, acquired. I think that this uh, presentation is a great example of what uh, a European project can actually do for communication. A communication project that aims to coordinate the various partners uh, or the partners uh, uh, facing this uh, Adriatic Sea and in particular the experience of students and uh, what a school like yours has uh, offered them that the students were able to go at sea and, uh, um, and develop a sustainable uh, fishing, uh, fishing gear, and then to bring uh, this uh, to the table. And also, uh, we should not forget that fishing is also tourism nowadays. Uh, for example, people from Milan or Germans uh, coming on a holiday on the Dalmatian coast or, or uh, on uh, Italian uh, coast of Emilia Romagna or Veneto region or other Adriatic Sea they also have to bring the Adriatic dream back home with them. And also, for example, the, the uh, memory of some uh, good dishes uh, that we can actually prepare and serve them so that uh, these tourists can actually uh, cook them if they find uh, the raw materials or the fish uh, at their fishmongers uh, in their own cities. Although we know that the fish resources and fish stocks are limited. So uh, ex local exploitation, uh, zero kilometer use uh, between uh, fishermen and uh, restaurants. This is very important. And it's becoming more and more important. Fresh fish is eaten in restaurants mostly. So this relationship is even more important. Uh, so that there are no unsold fish. Um, so we uh, obviously, if we have a wider range of buyers, uh, a better price can also be uh, 
obtained. Uh, and also, this also depends on production cost. We should not forget that uh, in the past, uh, production uh, fishing or fishing costs uh, uh, were, uh, were higher than the price uh, obtained from the market. Uh, uh, people think that uh, whatever uh, their, their work, uh, fishermen, they have to go at sea and whatever they find, they are trying, they will, they're going to sell it. That's not the case. There should always be a gain. Um, uh, Vadis, can you take the floor? Vadis, you are muted. Uh, we see you are driving. So maybe when you stop, you just uh, tell us and you can take the floor. Vadis? Vadis, um, you have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. No, it doesn't work. So I now give the floor to Valentina Tepidino. She is the author of uh, an imported atl fish atlas. And in particular, with her work as a journalist and biologist, which is quite a unique match. But is when you stop driving, maybe I'll ask you uh, to take the floor because uh, your microphone doesn't work now. So Valentina Tepedino, she is a biologist who has also worked a lot to popularize this science and she has uh, discovered her journalist um, talent and she has also uh, the publisher of uh, an important uh, um, journal a magazine to uh, spread the knowledge of this product valentina valentina you have the floor thank you pier giorgio thank you for having invited me i uh, I like this project very much because I think it's a very uh, matter of fact project. I've uh, actually attended several events to promote the project and I worked with several project partners uh, regarding communication and they've always updated me on, on the development. I've learned new things today and as far as communication is concerned, as you Actually, everybody's talking about sustainability. Uh, we need to be sustainable, also in cuisine, in, in uh, uh, sustainability is very important, but we need to be to have a matter of fact approach. And what I like in Price Fish, uh, that actually this project tries to give some matter of fact um, uh, elements for those uh, who, uh, for chefs, for restaurants, and there is a lot of confusion right now. It's not easy at all. There is no real uh, legal definition of what sustainability is. And uh, there are no <coughs> many um, institutional references on this. Obviously, fish must be caught uh, following the law and uh, uh, avoiding fishing uh, 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 undersized uh, fish. And these rules actually uh, uh, are uh, mandatory rules. Uh, the fish could should be used by uh, should be caught by um, uh, allowed uh, fishing gear, etc. Et so there are lots of uh, criteria, but many uh, many of these criteria are not known by uh, restaurant owners nor by consumers. Now I don't know if I can share my screen now to show you, for example. I'm trying to share my screen now. So, as I was saying, starting from minimum fish sizes, I was referring to. 
obviously this is uh, for granted among uh, professionals but many uh, chefs or restaurant owners don't even know that there is this rule about minimum sizes there are no tables available this applies to mollusks to crustaceans and you can see here for example the origin is very important whether this is, comes from the mediterranean or from the atlantic uh, because there are different rules depending on the ocean or sea and uh, as i said before i like this project prize fish because it's always very important to uh, uh, first of all to identify objective parameters so that a chef a cook a consumer when uh, choosing to buy certain type of fish, this type of fish is a more sustainable um, option. So rather than buying a product that was caught with, uh, as we were seeing earlier, a highly selective uh, fishing gear, which is somehow uh, indicated on the product, for example, and it's uh, caught uh, in particular, uh, Chef Leone was uh, talking about uh, the bivalve cooperative, bivalve producer cooperative, that is to those who respect the sea following a certified approach and uh, through a producer organization, a fisherman organization among 300 producers in an orderly way. And this is very important. And this is going to be even more important uh, to organize producer, producers more and more so that their type of fishing uh, meets also the demand. Another production issue is that uh, uh, fishermen uh, uh, go uh, at sea and then they bring everything home, but if too much fish is uh, caught, uh, the prices uh, um, obviously uh, fall, uh, prices drop uh, and uh, uh, the Omega-3 organization has also done uh, very much uh, a lot of research work. Uh, they, uh, when we have abandoned uh, coal uh, catches and, uh, by, and by processing products in a particular way, they can extend uh, their sh the shelf life of the product. So the prices are capped. Uh, they are not, um, they don't lose value. They have longer uh, uh, shelf lives, and not only for uh, Croatian and Italian markets, but also on other international markets. And also another, another important thing is to have a correct communication, what's behind the product. Uh, as we saw in today's video, it's very nice to tell one story, what's behind all these uh, activities. Yes, I'm not getting into details of this. Actually, my presentation is a very generic presentation because first I wanted to hear what previous speakers uh, speaking before me would say before uh, deciding what I should add uh, with reference to what uh, uh, I see uh, based on my 20 year, uh, 20 year experience. And I think that what I've just said are the priorities. We have to move on with projects of this type uh, that are following a, a, a very um, good model. We should help uh, uh, fishers uh, uh, training them uh, to better understand uh, what this model might be, but organization is important, as I said before, uh, more sustainable uh, fisheries, uh, but in a very matter of fact way, I think that the brand the certification is important, uh, but in the end that by, by working with consumer association, uh, I think that consumers need to uh, understand why is this uh, product more sustainable. Uh, consumers need to easily understand why this product is sustainable more than another, and this could uh, make uh, help them decide on whether, for example, to pay more for that specific uh, product. But the information must be very easy, must be very simple. It's not just by saying, trust me, or look at the, uh, call the green number, or this is a technique 
that, uh, for example, is more sustainable than others. I have to uh, provide meaningful uh, answers and meaningful information to consumers. Uh, uh, for example, by explaining that, for example, uh, if fish uh, over overfish, then they uh, have surplus products that they need to, to eat somehow. Or, for example, what I uh, I saw last time that they use this uh, um, catching system, these uh, water pumps, whereby uh, fish is less stressed. Um, and this has a positive impact on the quality of the fish. Uh, this is another of the uh, of, of price fish uh, projects. Or, for example, I can optimize some fishing techniques as shown by uh, the director of the uh, uh, Technical Institute. So we can uh, uh, have some fishing uh, techniques and methods become more selective. So it, I think that uh, uh, going uh, looking at the future, we are going to eat more and more farmed uh, fish in the uh, in the future. But at the same time, uh, fished uh, product uh, should be uh, leveraged. The, its value should be valued. So maybe I eat less of fished uh, um, product, but I understand uh, its properties uh, and its higher quality. Okay, I would like to hear also the opinion from the University of Bologna. What is their opinion? Actually, I stopped because what you said is very important. Uh, we should also think on these issues because we need to assess fishing and fisheries in the future. Uh, we uh, are experiencing uh, major changes, epochal changes, as far as fisheries are concerned. And if we want, if we don't want to lose this huge tradition behind fishing, we need to understand that maybe we are going to use all the fishing gears again. And as far as the Adriatic populations uh, are concerned, uh, we uh, trolling fishing uh, was used at the beginning of the 17th uh, um, century. A special fishing boat was invented allowing for trolling nets to be attached. Over the last 200 years, this type of fishing has evolved. And uh, back in the 1970s and 80s, uh, actually, uh, as far as uh, uh, blue fish was concerned, uh, the government would step in to buy to buy all the uh, product surplus and turn it into fodder, into animal fodder, in order to maintain, to keep the price stable. Obviously, we cannot afford all this again because uh, uh, we want quality products. Uh, probably uh, what we need to do is to understand what are the new systems for marketing, for selling these products to keep the product, the prices stable. But I think that the more ancient uh, uh, fishing years, as already mentioned by Alberto earlier, uh, should uh, be used again. These old uh, tools, like, for example, traps or um, other types of nets, can be further developed to uh, implement more selective uh, um, fishing, uh, um, more selective type of fishing. And obviously, the product that we can then put on our tables are better products, uh, higher quality products, uh, and a product that can. Uh, now, Pietro Roccoli, University of Bologna. Pietro Roccoli can tell us something about uh, the health aspects of uh, fish products and not only in terms of sustainability. What can the Department of uh, Food Safety and Food Science uh, do 
to tell us that what we are eating is a, a product worth being eaten. The zero product is already good. So what can this do for consumers, producers, and processors? Thank you. Thank you, Pier Giorgio. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you see my PowerPoint? I hope so. Yes. We, we can do what we have already started to do within the activities of Price Fish. Our research group of the University of Bologna uh, works on processing our presentation, our intervention within the, the chain, the distribution chain is after harvesting and uh, before consumption. What do, the, what do consumers expect from food products? In the past, the needs were different. We talked about availability of food. Today, we are more demanding in terms of quality of benefits for our health of uh, sensorial aspects, but uh, sensory attributes, uh, food safety is a prerequisite. Uh, it is something that comes first. And there is also an economic issue in terms of uh, easiness of use, uh, Considering our life rhythms, uh, this is an important aspect. And uh, the for the fact of having uh, ready to be used uh, fish products is a, an added value, and a value that is essential. Then we have already talked about uh, the reuse of byproducts. We will see some examples. Uh, with the presentation of uh, technologies and applications and the sustainability of the whole supply chain. Why are fish products so critical in terms of shelf life? First of all, there is a tradition of consumption of fresh product, except for canned food. The fish product is typically a fresh product when it is bought, filleted, or uh, as a whole. And so these products have interesting and important problems in terms of um, uh, stability. They have high content of spoilage bacteria, pre presence of autolytic enzymes, pH, low acid, high water activity. And so the quality and the safety of the product are influenced. What, uh, what is done on the fresh product? Let's uh, talk about the cold chain in uh, Scandinavian countries. Uh, there is the super chilling, that is to say, that the fish is kept at minus one, two, five. So we have a frozen water that is not a solid. And so this decrease in temperature by eight degrees can, can provide a product like this salmon without guts that uh, lasts uh, 20, 25 days working on the cold chain. But what is the reality? This is uh, a study we conducted with the colleagues of uh, Ecopesce Cesenatico. We have a distribution chain from primary transport to distribution to secondary transport to unloading point of sale, storage point of sale, consumer transport. So this change is very far 
from this uh, super chilling um, situation. We, we have a high temperatures, so the fact of increasing the temperature by five or 10 degrees uh, uh, means that we reduce the shelf life from 12 days to a few days. So these are devastating effects for fish products. So intelligent packaging would be very useful with time temperature integrators they witness the thermal abuse during the life of products. And so this product cannot be of quality anymore, but we don't know why these integrators are not applied in Italy. There are responsibilities that cannot be identified in the cold chain management. So. First of all, it is important to talk about temperatures, packaging and preservation modalities. Among the innovative technology developed within the price fish in collaboration with the industrial partners, high hydrostatic pressure modalities are very interesting. It is a cold treatment, so temperatures never reach levels higher than 10 degrees when this uh, treatment is applied with a cooling system. Just to give you here some technical um, aspects in the collaboration with an industrial partner, we used this uh, uh, diagram in order to explain to you that we have a packed product entering into baskets and then into a chamber and then into a, another chamber filled with water and through the application of intensifiers of pumps this water has a pressure gives a pressure on the food uh, that is the skin packed or vacuum packed these pressures are five, six times the pressure, the normal, the normal pressure. So these pressure pressures inactivate microorganisms such as thermal pasteurization. So all microorganisms are killed. But in this manner, we have extended shelf lives keeping the chain of uh, the refrigerated products. So we have soft vacuum packaging or skin packaging. Here you can see a few examples of products we developed in other research contexts, shrimp burgers or sausage, shrimp sausages with seaweeds. And, and with the shelf life from one week to, to 30 days or three, four uh, weeks, for example, with the, with the salmon. So in, the, in view of sustainability, so this product is really very interesting. This is an application, an additional application of HPP. This is... Uh, complete uh, flesh separation for a lobster. You see that uh, we can also, we can uh, separate every element. So, so many applications present all over the world uh, on uh, uh, fish, uh, on oysters. There is also another technology modified atmosphere packaging, not the conventional with the, um, nitrogen or CO2, but with innovative gases, we have seen the important effects in terms of clearance of the oxidization indexes. So with levels similar to fresh, fish. 
So within the Price Fisher, what uh, did we do? We collaborated with producers and users of some technologies in order to create new products in, in for sustainability. And we found uh, actors who were really um, ex expert prepared some uh, data, some quick data for the last uh, slides. So these uh, sardines in these uh, protected atmospheres uh, with uh, other innovation uh, techniques uh, used with a shelf life of uh, 13 days and high pressure applied to clams with the, in collaboration with the Piscaori Enterprise. So we tested interesting products. Some products were very good, some less. But this treatment is very good in terms of microbic treatment. And then the burger presented by, described by Ivan, realized in, in uh, carried out in cooperation with the Cibo e Salute and other interpreters another company, Italian company. So these burgers were stabilized with high pressures with shrimps and mullets and some clean label ingredients with a shelf life of 30 days. So you can understand the margin of development and improvement in terms of stability. But let's see now the newest processes, gas plasma, from solid to liquid to gas, we can increase the energy through ionization. When uh, there is, uh, when, when there are thunders in the air, so plasma has uh, reactive uh, parts that elements uh, that can uh, sanitize through the use of gas or water in order to create the plasma. That's uh, uh, that's the, an, a powerful, uh, a strength and the principle. It is a contribution of many uh, effects. There are interesting studies on fresh fillets, on products without guts, and as this is a sanitizing product, uh, it is uh, chemical free, it has no residues and it extends the product the shelf life. It must be used, it must be studied. And the last uh, treatment, the pulsed electric fields, for example, the companies uh, um, produ uh, producing Potatoes, uh, processing potatoes have these fields. We tested this system on fish just to say whether, for example, we can put the gene in the clonated. This was this machine was used for the gene in the clonated uh, um, uh, sheep dolly. So this is used for the vegetable sector, but we have to study this technology for the animal sector. But we are increasing the mass transfer. We increase uh, processes. Uh, we reduce the microbial development. And uh, the last uh, example, the squillets. This is another research in cooperation with the EcoPage uh, from Cesemnatico. It is mechanically separated in order to obtain flesh with a higher stability, in order to use it uh, as a frozen. And uh, from the shell, we can uh, obtain kitten. And if we reduce the molecular weight, we can use uh, ketosan. Ketosan is used also for the for the uh, thread used in the surgery with the high costs. So we have to do many 
things, but uh, the research world has to cooperate with enterprises, with companies uh, uh, developing technologies. You see examples of products, interesting products. So we are, so you are launching us into the future. This is the region Emilia Romagna. This is a publication of the colleagues of Ravenna, sent by Alessia Cariani, the project coordinator. And you can see what we waste in, in Emilia Romagna. This is focused on supermarkets, um, fishmongers, and the restaurants. So we have to work on this carefully. The, because fish is a resource that we must not waste. And in this study, we don't consider waste on fishing boats and on the fish markets after tenders. We don't know how much this waste is. And I conclude with the sort of uh, provocation you see. There are alternative proteins, insects, and but we waste uh, fish, and we, we first of all, for, for example, we have uh, some strange products, uh, but uh, we waste fish. We must remember that the fish caught is the highest resource of low-cost proteins we have. So we must not waste fish in order to visit, to forecast what can uh, see. So the idea of ketosan, I think, is meaningful in terms of what the science can do for certain species of fish. But Pietro consumato, cons con consumer, sorry. Pietro, as a consumer, would you trust these products? Would you go to a restaurant that proposes these products? Or would you like to go to another restaurant that buys fresh fish, but you don't know how this fresh fish has gone through the cold chain. And um, do you think that the organoleptic elliptic properties are kept? I am connected from Parma. There is no sea in Parma. And as a person born in Jersey and Attico, when I go to the con countryside in Rimini, for example, when fish is cooked when fish is caught in the morning and fish is immediately cooked. So really this is uh, sad for me, but we have, we have to make this a step forward. So we have waste, especially in cities far from the sea. So the answer is, I don't know. But the organoleptic uh, properties are kept in this uh, situation. From your research, I understand that you want to propose cold fish, but also cold fish without breaking the molecular aspects that uh, give the organoleptic uh, properties. Yes, the future of processes is uh, long term. Vadis Paisanti, can I give you the floor? Are you connected before concluding? He's a fisherman. Anche un pescatore un allevatore di vongole. Vadis is also a fisherman and a uh, clam uh, uh, farmer. He is also a clam farmer, and he's a great expert for, uh, in terms of cooking fish products. And uh, he, is a, uh, he knows a lot on this, 
So I invite him to give us uh, what's the opinion of Fisher's. Uh, here's the real interface between all this world we have been discussing today and fishermen uh like andrea and even are doing this uh, for croatia i think that uh, Badis uh, has uh, knows what the situation is uh, right now among fishermen so what do you think about being able to increase uh, the um, added value of products uh, 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 even if a, a fisherman should uh, catch less Good morning, everybody. Thank you for your invitation, for all very interesting presentations, and also the one by the uh, professor at the University of Bologna, uh, by Mr. Pietro Roccoli. And I think that it's always very important to carry out new studies and investigations. And also, uh, Obviously, it's also very interesting to hear what you have been doing about squillers, uh, squiller mantis. Uh, nothing is destroyed, everything is processed. This is uh, quite an ancient uh, saying. So I think that it's good that we should not waste anything. Uh, everything can be used uh, when the blue economy, I'm talking about the sea, where the Silogy trade fair has is just finished. Uh, lots of different issues were discussed over three years. And uh, also the price fish project is also very important. However, um, I think that I obviously agree uh, uh, with you on almost everything, but I should also tell you what the other side said. So I'm not saying that's not true, what you've been saying. Uh, we, are, we don't agree as far as fishermen are. Uh, I'm going to say a couple of things, fundamental things. Today, we are going to have a national meeting uh, at the National Committee, the uh, latest draft by the Ministry of Fisheries. Uh, obviously following uh, Brussels uh, uh, guidelines concerning our GSAs, how many days of fishing, depending on the size of the fishing boat, etc., etc. So how many days of fishing we are allowed, uh, or, uh, fishing less we are supposed to fish. For example, in our GSA, it's GSA 17, uh, 107 days less no oh we we can fish for 107 days so we'll ask uh, lawmakers who have decided this uh, uh, even if um, fishing has gone down over the last 20 years why have they decided uh, all this uh, because we're not just talking about companies or enterprises, many have already closed, um, but we are talking about uh, family run businesses, uh, for example, uh, doing uh, trolling, uh, fishing. Uh, how can they manage surviving? You will have to change job. This is what lawmakers are saying. Why is it so? In other, uh, I was muted in one. Uh, in one of these webinars, uh, they told me that it was accidental, but uh, uh, I think Dr. Basi asked this question to Pietro. Uh, I don't remember the name. Pietro, Pietro Roccoli. So, Pier Giorgio asked a very good question. If you were to eat uh, fish, uh, would you uh, uh, would you use a mold a mold uh, for uh, uh, for clams a, a mold for squillers a mold for anchovies or you would e e eat the squillers the anchovies the the uh, clams themselves we'll get there in the future but 
that minister sitting in Brussels and going to the restaurant, uh, no matter if they're going to Brussels or, or to Rome, uh, because of the it's spending capacity, of course, Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 that minister doesn't have to ask the uh, restaurateur that he wants to eat a fresh fish. So are we going back to the Middle Ages that those who uh, who can afford it, they can eat fresh fish? Right. For example, when my uh, with my father. Uh, in the in the past, uh, I'm an agent. I'm an agent, uh, and back was back in 1992, for example, in with my past father um, in uh, Venice uh, when we used to go and uh, selling uh, our skillets, uh, and the price uh, uh, went from 40 to 90 thousand liras. And it is uh, sold there because it is eaten there. So they got uh, uh, but lobsters, for example, uh, would get there from Cuba uh, with a direct uh, flight, no matter with a cargo um, uh, plane, of course. But what about sustainability? Do we want sustainability only for, for our home? Uh, and so when we talk about the sustainability, they should also promote it in Cuba or in Mekong, where um, uh, they are uh, farming other types of fish, for example, uh, they are the so-called pangasio fish. Uh, uh, because they want to help the development of those areas. This was uh, a member of parliament uh, answer to me when talking about rice, for example. Uh, so someone was asking about pesticides and um, uh, uh, the, the answer was that's a way we can help them develop. So the, the future will be, we won't uh, be able to fish any longer because uh, uh, we are allowed to fish less and less. Uh, as already mentioned by Mr. Vaz in the morning, we need to promote sustainability, environmental sustainability, of course. But if that is, um, environmental sustainability is not combined with the, the economic uh, uh, um, uh, sustainability of companies or social sustainability, if I close my business, if I go bankrupt, what about households? Where are people going to find a job? Uh, especially people who have been working as fishermen for 20, 30, 40 years. But uh, fish will still get on our table because uh, we'll get fish by a plane uh, uh, far from uh, Far East Asia uh, with a connection in Dubai and Frankfurt, for example, and they will get to Europe to our uh, table uh, within maximum 24 hours. Uh, so and, and maybe uh, the, 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 that, that product will still be deemed to be a uh, fresh product, uh, also considering the remarkable developments in technologies for extending uh, shelf life. So we welcome all this, but if we have no longer fishermen, if we have no longer farmers, uh, because I still have a farmer who gives me fresh eggs, or I have also ordered a cup for, for, for Christmas, uh, uh, he said, He said, for example, I want to see you one day with your computers. He's an 80 years old man uh, with all your meetings, with all your things. Uh, 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 I have my plot of land, my 20 meter, square meters of plot with my vegetable garden uh, and with my hands. I eat. What are you going to eat with your computers? So this is something that we need uh, to consider. So, and I'm done. The, um, the world of fishing is done. And uh, in particular, the GSA 17 from Trieste down to the Gargano. 
uh, I think sooner or later, but I think soon is going to close. All the product we have today, uh, uh, all the product that we can, we get uh, uh, to our table, sardines and cuttlefish, etc. We've lost, we've lost. It won't be on our table anymore. So well, welcome uh, 3D uh, uh, printed uh, uh, shrimp. So uh, for example, recently I've, I've heard uh, that a restaurant has, uh, is, is serving a 3D molded uh, um, uh, meat or hamburger uh, uh, made of uh, several types of va vegetables and uh, mimicking or uh, the uh, the real uh, look of meat. They were the first one that uh, they are serving uh, 3D molded uh, vegetable meat. So if this is uh, the future world of our food, then uh, investing on worms, on uh, crickets, on insects, on edible crickets, that could be the future. Rather than 20 hectares of land for cereals, it's better to have just one hectare and farming crickets or, or all insects that uh, they are already being eaten in Asia. So we need to uh, consider social sustainability as well, because uh, 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 if, uh, if uh, we are going to lose all these jobs, uh, one day uh, we'll just look at each other in the eyes uh, because obviously we need to eat, we need to put some, some food on, on, on our plates, of course, but uh, social uh, sustainability of these uh, trends has to be questioned. Thank you very much for your words. Actually, the, uh, uh, the picture you have outlined is quite worrying. And these projects also aim at finding solutions whereby this picture, the picture you have outlined, is not to become a reality. Uh, obviously, we don't want what you said to happen in the future. So all this, of course, uh, is based on uncertain data concerning catches, uncertain information about the fish stocks, uh, and they do not actually correspond to the perception of the few rem still remaining fishers. Uh, I would like to remind you that in Emilia Romagna, the fishing fleet has been uh, decreased by one third and, this, and the same happened in uh, the Marche region. In Croatia, the fishing uh, fleet is a bit uh, larger because they have joined us uh, more recently within the European unit and we hope this fleet won't uh, get lost. And what we need to do is that uh, uh, also when looking at this big Adriatic community, looking at this important Adriatic community that uh, has a, an important common denominator uh, as to their approach to fishing, to the sea and uh, aquaculture is going to be lost. So we can't afford the Adriatic Sea to die and in particular that the fishing in the Adriatic dies, because if this happens, also our uh, culture, this uh, cultural uh, uniqueness is also going to die, something that for centuries have turned this sea as a bridge and never as a border. Border is something we uh, were used to looking at as a place where, where our own properties ends. But actually the word border means something else, a concept of unification, of union. The border is confine in Italian with the end, so that the end of two parts, well-defined uh, parts that meet together. So I hope that these projects will be used for this. 
to imagine our border, our confine in Italian as a meeting point, not as a place of division. And we have to do this through fishing and aquaculture, because uh, as I said before, the information we have do not match what, what the reality. In particular, this is a man uh, where uh, we have the sea where man has uh, uh, worked. Uh, uh, this is an anthropic sea, so uh, uh, failing, failing to continue with fishing activities uh, may risk creating other problems regarding biodiversity. So it might be something uh, illogical, but stopping to fish certain species uh, is likely to uh, um, uh, cause an increase in predator species and uh, these predators uh, risk destroying uh, all the target species. And also because uh, fishers won't be there anymore. So we, what we want is a sea full of fish where man can work to tell uh, this, the story of, uh, of, uh, of this sea and to uh, pass it over to their children. So we, we don't want uh, a sea where our owners uh, live far away from the coast, uh, where uh, owners who are only interested in uh, getting the best price uh, for the products. So this could be our future. Great owners, uh, uh, fishing boat owners, uh, uh, with uh, huge uh, uh, fishing boats uh, with three or four trolling nets uh, in order to achieve a scale economy and in order to cut fishing costs. And uh, they just uh, uh, have a cruise uh, uh, and we don't know whether these crews are actually paid according to applicable um, employment regulations. And we know that this is already uh, uh, taking place in many oceans, and we don't want this to happen in our seas in the Adriatic because our fishermen are no longer there. Fishers are the real uh, sentinels of the environment of our society, and they are the sentiment sentinels of a real community, uh, not uh, of, of an economy. Uh, where uh, uh, the, uh, the fishers are the owners of the fishing boats and uh, who, are, uh, who catch uh, fish in a sustainable way. They know that this sea has to be respected because the same fish has to continue providing products also tomorrow. Unlike uh, um, industrial fishing, uh, which is not uh, concerned about these issues, uh, but only about making money. So we know that, uh, we all, and with these projects, we, we, we like prize fish or uh, other uh, pro uh, projects, are it clean, as smarties, etc., and many other uh, Italy Croatian projects have built. Uh, an important heritage over the last seven uh, years. Uh, in the next seven years, uh, uh, we are going to have um, uh, uh, to work on other important projects. We need to learn uh, our lessons we have learned. We need to stop and go again. So first of all, to learn what was the lesson uh, uh, of, uh, that we have gained through these past projects and the following in our with our scientific approach, technical approach, and also what the various entities, uh, regional entities have discussed, or what the various uh, uh, producers have discussed. How can we help administrations and entities to support the next European projects and to support uh, uh, sea management policies?
So I thank all of you for this uh, wonderful morning. I think that uh, 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 Valent I was really happy to hear that Valentino Tepidino has learned new things. Uh, if she says that she has learned something new, this is great. She is because she is really an expert in, in this industry. Yes, congratulations, because it was very interesting. So this, it means that this webinar was useful for everybody. So the press uh, project is going to end in a couple, in a few days. So we'll meet in Zadar uh, with the main uh, project, with the pro project partners. In Zadar, there will be the final conference on the 29th. Uh, and I hope we'll uh, meet again to capitalize on what we have done so far and what is the future of all uh, this uh, huge, uh, important ideas that we have worked on and we have created with Price Fish. Uh, may I interrupt you, uh, Dr. Vazi? There is a final uh, survey, final survey. Yes, of course, I, I forgot it. So you can start with the survey, four or five questions you have to answer. And then obviously uh, we'll have the final greeting. So uh, we have these questions both in Italian and in English. I'm sorry we weren't able to translate them in Croatian. Uh, do you think a sustainable label would be useful to certify products fish in the Adriatic Sea? Would you pay more for fish product with a sustainability label? Uh, all uh, answers are anonymous, so don't be shy. And please answer uh, the survey. Do you trust existing sustainability brands or labels? Uh, would you prefer buying a, a product with a sustainability label rather than an, a product without a sustainability label? Would you like to see the provenance, the origin of fish listed uh, in a restaurant menu? This is, is a much discussed issue uh, in the food industry. And the last question, number six, do you prefer a processed product for keeping the flavor even without the shape of fish or with the shape of fish? How uh, attendants are uh, shy. Please don't be shy. Somebody said that uh, the, the, poll, uh, the, the poll closed before being able to answer. It happened to me too. I was able to uh, to uh, fill in the poll. Well, that's quite strange. What happened? So I will uh, launch it again, a second time. Penso il sondaggio non non ci danno da mangiare questi problemi perché già è mezzogiorno e mezza e dobbiamo ci aspetta. Lunch is waiting for us. We are going to involve also Marcello Leone because we need some new recipes from him and we can actually have a prize fish recipe. Yes, because obviously we have worked on Adriatic fish. I don't know what's, what's the problem, but if you allow me to, I send this poll by mail to all participants. So even those who are not able to fill in, they will they can do that later. But there is a technical there is a technical problem. I don't know what because we have done it many times in the previous webinars. But we are going to ask our participants to um, to fill in later. So thank you, answer the email you get on this poll. Uh, so we can tell you also about the outcome of the poll. The, uh, the questions are quite simple. And thank you, everybody. I would like to thank University of Bologna, 
uh, uh, also to uh, Miss Cariani. She was uh, teaching today, so she couldn't join us. Uh, Cariani is our project manager. And I would like to thank her for having created this project that has yielded these important results that are not an end point, but a starting point for our future. Thank you. Thank you, everybody from Pratvid. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.